call me what you want, open invitation. I'm a human being infused with creative vibration. Utilizing melodies and visual stimulation. Beats and stories get the glory, you get the relation. I get impatient like a doctor racing. Bullets coming from my soul, my body just a casing. What is up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Paralyzed Artist Podcast. My name is Daniel Bryant Alvarez. And I'm coming at you guys with a very dope homie that I've known and met through the photography scene here in LA, another dope creative person. I'll let him uh, give you guys a little intro. I'm Riley Alvarez by Lobinos. Been knowing Daniel for a cool minute too since what, 20, 2015, 2016, early days. We're considered OGs in the yeah. photography scene, bro. How do you feel about that, bro? Shit, you know it's been crazy though many years. You know it's been changed. Yeah, man. It's crazy. Like, um, when there was a meet not that long ago where a bunch of, like, old G people showed up randomly out of yeah. nowhere. Like, some of the people that have been coming out for four or five years. Out of nowhere. And we were just chilling. Uh, it was actually with Karen. Karen Trinity's mom. Mm-hmm. Remember Karen? Yeah. So like she just she had it they had it shown up in like over a year bro like two years know where they more. popped out and they just ran she, like they both randomly came and showed mm-hmm. up and we were just like chilling talking and then there came a point where it was kind of like later already mm-hmm. and we were all just chilling and then she, uh, she pointed out because there was like a bunch of people still shooting but it was yeah. like new people it was like a bunch of new faces mm-hmm. and, and Karen was like. It's crazy because that used to be you guys. Yeah. Like, you guys would be, like, all super into it, getting all the shots. And we Hell were just all, yeah. like, the OGs were just, like, chilling, catching up with everybody. Mm-hmm. And, everything. and it was crazy to, like, to look at it that way. Like, damn, we've been in the game for a cool minute, you for know? For a like, cool minute. Yeah. But you know that's just, just going to keep bigger and bigger. And a lot of people hear about it and people come and go. But whenever people come, it's, like, a whole new world to them. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, it's 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 almost like a, a wave of people come, like, yep. you know, like you, you just see new faces. New like, faces kinda... come in and new faces come out. And that, and whenever they do, that's when they'll pop out here and there and they'll support. But yeah. everybody, like, once they go through, like, that phase, they start going, like, through a lot of shit because of that many people they ended up meeting just through those meets. Yeah. They ended up connecting and just getting creative with one another. Yeah, man, it's crazy. I always tell people, like, if, if you haven't, gone out to a photography meetup mm-hmm. or checked out like the mm-hmm. photography scene you gotta go at least one time take out one check time out the scene. enjoy the experience yeah for sure mm-hmm. what got you into the game like how did you get into the whole photography scene like how'd you get into a little by little it, w- it all started in mexico in mexico mexico probably like around the same time 2013 2012 and that's when i first started like shooting here and there parents gave me the camera and they were like you're gonna take some pictures for us at the trip we went to a lake and it was by Zamora. So we went to Zamora and that's when it just, I went around the lake, took some pictures, smoking a joint, walking around and just got the hang of it, pulled it off. And I, until this day, I still have those pictures. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's dope. And mm-hmm. what, was it like a digital or like a digital. film camera? It was a point and shoot, like point old school. Oh. Yeah. No removal lens, no nothing. It yeah. was just a basic family camera. Yeah. And yeah, it, it took some decent pictures. And at that time, I, I hate to admit it, but I was still shooting JPEG. <laughs> hey, it got you in the game, man. It got, got you, in, you the in the game. Yeah, yeah that's what matters. Like, yeah. um, I actually took photography classes, and my teacher, uh, he's been shooting for I think like forty years, mm-hmm. and he had been teaching for like I think twenty years. Damn. And one of the main things that he always said is like the equipment doesn't really matter. It's like whatever camera you have available, whatever. that's the best camera, bro. As exactly. long as you get the image or create mm-hmm. whatever, yeah, that's what matters, you know. Because mm-hmm. like you could, there's people that shoot with like Polaroids. This is like yeah. super basic, and yeah. you can still get dope stuff. And then you got the people that got the you know the, oh, yeah, the reds like, and like the fucking uh, yeah the, the the Leicas everything the Sony's nowadays too shit yeah. you yeah. know they're getting crazy with the I'm on that borderline where like I feel like my camera's already kind of getting outdated yeah so I'm like damn should I get yeah. one of the new Sony's because with the Sony's it's like the video like I'm like mm-hmm. and then they record some of the Sony's record like unlimited video so I've been checking out some of the Sony's. 
Like, I feel like mm-hmm. I'm kind of like a Canon fanboy, like, all the yeah. way. But I kind of, like, I'm, I'm pretty loyal to yeah. Canon. So I'm kind of like, damn. You're like, stuck with it. I kind of, like, I want to go Canon. But at the same time, it's like, I might go Sony and then down the line just get a, a Canon. Yeah. Or what I've been thinking is, because honestly, I, just, I love the Canon, too. I'm with Canon all the way. But with that Sony, I tested it out last. Like, who was it? With Cali. Kelly and their um Kelly shoots ended up buying a camera at Sony and it was the A seven three and I did a couple shots. I loved how they work and especially the focusing, just because it does that zoom focus for you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people say that about the about the Sony's at the mm-hmm. that, that focus is crazy. Yeah. And the colors are dope. Like I don't know. I just yeah. like I feel like when I set up my camera, even on a tripod, even if yeah. I set on a tripod manual focus and I zoom in and really mm-hmm. like zoom in on something specific, I still feel like I'm not getting like super crispy, sharp, dope colors. Yeah. From which one? I have a Canon 80D. 80D, but yeah. that's what's going on. It's. I mean, what is it? It's like the first ones came out in like 2016, yeah. and it's it's not a full frame camera as well, so. Gotta get that full frame. Gotta jump into the full frame. Yeah, I know. I need to. That's what if, I'm saying. So if we've, I've been, we've been in the game for this long. I'm so surprised you're still in the crowd. I'm a broke Mexican, bro. <laughs> All my paintings are hanging right here, bro. Like shit, I feel you on that shit. Sometimes I'm like, I'm like, yo, I got, I, I got like, literally a few thousand dollars just hanging on my wall. I'm like, I need to yeah. move this stuff, you know. Gotta get it out there. Gotta put it on some galleries. But yeah, I mean, it's on me. I'm not marketing my work as as well as I can be. Mm-hmm. So it's a little on me. So I don't know if it's a little bit of like, I don't want to let it go. Like, <laughs> so I'm kind of like bullshitting and avoiding it a little bit. But yeah, I'm like, yeah, I need to, I need to start moving this yeah. shit. Good thing is that the the art walks are starting to come back. They are. So the um yeah the L A art walk the first one's next month on the tenth. Mm-hmm. I believe so. I'm gonna take a few of the smaller ones just to kind of like on the lo- them on the minimum on the yeah, low. <laughs> hit, might hit them with them low low prices just to kind of like you know creep them in. Yeah, just to <laughs> get them interested. Yo, just to be able to like create new work and then create you know mm-hmm. open up a few spots for me or whatever. Oh uh, yeah. But um, from from all of them, I prefer this one, Emily. Yeah, just because it's moodier. The whole canvas is all dark. Yeah, I was like, let me try something different. So I just did the little border or whatever. But you then know? this one, ooh, with them shadows, that grays, ooh. Them Twitter, Instagram models. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, not Instagram, Twitter. I actually Twitter. got that, yeah, like some chick that I would just post all kind of random stuff. Mm-hmm. I was like, yo, I, I could probably make a dope painting out of your, one of your pictures. And she was like, go for it. And I was like, bam, son. Hey, came out dope. It's funny. I actually not that long ago I found a bunch of old drawings that I had done. Yeah, and they were like, um, they were kind of just like almost the same thing, like torsos. Mm-hmm. Like, like I don't know what got me into like just doing like the the body and cutting mm-hmm. off like the head. And Cut off the off with them head. <laughs> uh, I'm like, <laughs> but so far uh, with the concept of cutting the head, especially with that one over there. It's good. Yeah, I don't know. Like, something about keeping them a little bit, like, anonymous. Something different, because a lot of people don't like getting cut. Like, when they see something that's cut off the head, they they, they don't fuck with it. But when you cut it to a certain point, that's where it actually gets a good angle. Well, that's where the art in it comes in. Yeah. When the thing is, in photography, you're not supposed to cut you're heads not. or anything yeah. like that, you know? <laughs> Legs, like, I, that's one of the things that I always, like, not gets to me, but, like, mm-hmm. um messes with me like if yeah. i if i cut off someone's feet like mm-hmm. i'm like damn it doesn't look right like in my head it's telling I, me like i do it on purpose just to fuck with them <laughs> well then what i end up doing is kind of like cropping in like cutting off more and yeah going a little closer but yeah like in the back of my mind i'm always like damn i cut this out or, or something you know how sometimes when you're shooting and like they move and you might like cut a little bit on the top of the head yeah yeah like some people will throw those pictures out. Mm-hmm. Me, I'm like, damn, I cut her hair. Like, I don't want to. Well, now I guess still got to put it out there. Yeah, see, it's different. In photography, I I feel like, yeah, I shouldn't put that out. But with the <laughs> painting, it's different. You know, it's like, Hell yeah. You just, put that much work. And so far, the angles that you got on it always change. So it all depends. Just got to find the right image, you know. 
But um, uh-huh. I don't know. I might. Uh, I've been having like these like ideas that kind of have nothing to do with stencils and yeah. and it's kind of almost like a different. It would be almost like a different painting style. I have these yeah. ideas and I'm like. You won't, I you, so, you won't know. Switch. You won't know. You won't know until you start fucking with it. <laughs> just gotta fuck with it. You just gotta say fuck it and just fuck with it. See if you mess with it. You feel the flow, and if you if it's going good, then why not? You know. Try something different. Yeah. Try but something every day. Getting back to your photography journey. Mm-hmm. What's up? So you got your fur your. First shots with the point and shoot, and point then and shoot. you just kept shooting with it. Shooting with it, and then once I did my first job, that was part of city. I was like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna try to work here," and then buy myself a camera. And part of city was across the street, over in Chino Hills. So I was like, "Fuck it." I during work, I went to um, before work, I went to go pick it up, and there was a Canon, Canon Rebel SL one, the tiny one, the small yeah, yeah, yeah. tiny one. Yeah, and. I- it was a cool little set. It was the eighteen to fifty five and the seventy five to three hundred. So it was a cool setup just to start off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good. I actually uh, have a funny story about that camera. Actually, Ooh, so what you got? So I I own that camera as well. Mm-hmm. Um. So I was I said earlier that I had I took photography classes. Yeah. So they were like courses. It was like a beginner course, intermediate course, and like mm-hmm. a professional course. And when they when they did the second course. They bought a SL1, mm-hmm. and it was like a prize. So what they did is like they started giving us tickets. Like so, we would get assignments, yeah, and then we would get tickets according to how good we did the, the assignment. assignment. Was and then at that time, I was shooting with a a, a Canon T3i, mm-hmm. and then the my my school provided cameras. They were kind of bait. They weren't basic like point and shoots, they but they like kind of were basic. No? Yeah, no, nah, they weren't even T's. They were no. like they were Sony's. And they were like point and shoots, but they weren't like basic point and shoots. They yeah. were pretty nice cameras, but I was shooting with the I was shooting with my um, T3i, mm-hmm. and I was just going wild, bro. I was like, <laughs> da, 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 like, like getting the assignment, bro. Like yeah, bro. So I was just getting tickets left and right, bro. Hey. So yeah, um, the course ended or whatever, and mm-hmm. um, how they did it is. They literally just put all the tickets in a bowl mm-hmm. and mix that shit up and pull the ticket out. But <laughs> I had so many tickets that my odds were like twice as good as the next person. So, of course, you won but that yeah, camera. So, of course, hey. I won. So I, so, I was shooting with that. I actually missed that camera. I ended up selling it. Mm-hmm. It was It's a sn- like nice little snappy camera. It's a good it camera is. to start with. It is. Just because of that whole touch feature. Like, don't get me wrong. The, T3, the T3s or the... Uh, the any of the T versions, they're good, but when uh, comparing it to that asshole version, it's a lot better. Just because when you're moving those set- settings on the touchscreen, everything is according to what you're seeing. So that's how it got me into photography easily. Yeah. Because I was just teach- touching the settings on the screen, mm-hmm. and I saw what I was getting. But if I, if Sony, if I, at that point, I knew how Sony was. I would have gone Sony all the way compared to Canon just yeah. because of those features they had with the viewfinder. With those cameras, like with that SL1, it really did put a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was a nice little camera. I think it's the equivalent of, or really, it was the, like really close to a, like a T5i T- or yeah. a T6. The 6, the T5 yeah. or T6. Just because of how compact and how fast you'd, almost the same pixels, I would believe. But yeah, yeah I the, think it is the same. Yeah. But the work that it would push, it almost um, all my work is based off of that camera. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I actually, um, I was talking to one of the other, like, photographers that we know, Serge. Mm-hmm. I was talking to him about, I was like, bro, I honestly, I feel like I used to get better pictures with, like, my T5i yeah. or the SL1 than, the, than my the ADD. I, I'm like, at this point, I was thinking the other day, like, should I just take it in and make sure it's, like, calibrated yeah. 100%? <laughs> I'm, maybe I'm over here, like, struggling with it and it's all fucking... You know, it's not cal- calibrated right or some shit. With some of those crops, though, you'd be able to fuck tear it up because them angles and the zoom on it, since it already has a crop frame, it gets a lot more info. Mm-hmm. Like, in my opinion, I think it's a lot smoother, the crops. On the... When you're shooting, it's a lot more smoother in the pictures. But For once sure. you start shooting dark, that's when you start losing uh, pixels and all that. 
Mm-hmm. Especially with like with this one, I ended up killing so many pixels. <laughs> I zoom in, I'll be like, "Shit, it's time yeah. to upgrade." That's how I feel. Like sometimes I feel like even when I put my ADD on a tripod, yeah, like I'll zoom in and I'm like, "Ah, damn, that shit's blurry as shit." Mm-hmm. And then I look at other people's stuff, like Surge's stuff, yeah, and he shoots with the Sony, mm-hmm. and I'm just like, "Bro, it's sharp. Like, I, it's I, sharp I, I can't get these pictures, bro." <laughs> like, his pictures out out of the camera, yeah, are way better than mine's like 100 percent edited bro i'm like what the fuck bro? shit gotta get into that film game yeah. i mean i am shooting bro we have the same camera Ooh! I, we, for real you know how these babies go that's but, another beat i've been lagging a little bit i've shot i'm on my fourth film and i've had i've had it over a year mm-hmm. i've had it maybe two years already bro shit. and i like the the films that i developed that the other day were the yeah. first ones off that camera. Damn, how they come out? Cool, yeah, cool. Like I, I got um, I got some like, I don't know. Like, I, I think because I had some film for a while sitting mm-hmm. around, so I don't know if the heat because it looks like it has like heat waves on some of them. Oh, so, so you got some like, nice effects to it. Then. Well, it's crazy because I, I a lot of the stuff that I shot was at an airport. Mm-hmm. So like it kind of it, it goes with like the like the, the runways, concept, so yeah. Like, yeah, I was talking to somebody. I forgot who it was, but they were like, "Shit, if you can, if you know how that happened, like if you can re- replicate that, shit, you could sell that film for hell of expensive, you know." Just but because like, of nah. that effect. Yeah, I was like, "Nah, I have no idea how the fuck." But I'm pretty sure with that, with those conditions, it was a hot day. If you're getting those effects, huh? yeah, it was pretty hot. I do. Yeah, I actually, I got a tan, bro. Dang. Like my brown ass got a tan, so it was hot, bro. <laughs> The struggle in LA. Yeah, bro. I was wearing a hat and um and yeah, and I still got a motherfucking tan. Like, no joke, look. Mm. Like if I take my you could see it, look. God damn. You could see my fucking God damn. Look at the tan. Huh? Don't don't forget to wear your set screen. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm safe, I'm brown, bro. Yeah. But my ass still got burnt. You've been shooting film. Like a while already, or you're just I've kind recently, of new to it too? I, I've been starting with it. Mm-hmm. As soon as I started um, basically like getting more involved with the shot. Yeah. Because yeah. not that long ago, I actually started like um, working from the dealership. Once I started interacting more with the shop and getting more with them, that's when I basically got offered the internship and I just went with it. You said shop, so... They don't, stop shop. they don't know what the Come shop through. is so kind of like <laughs> give them a little kind of like a breakdown of what what the shop is like what, what you're what exactly you're talking about so for the shop uh, we would scan develop and sell film and usually uh we would scan your film cut it get it developed and we would develop it off-site at a homie's house would he um where he would basically randy he would basically uh, matt Oh, is it Matt? I always get confused with his name. But uh, we w- he would take the film, he would get it developed, and uh, he would bring it to the shop the next day, and then we just scan it, and we would send the link to the people, and uh, they would just get their scans, and we would have their films there available. But so many people don't pick up their films, surprisingly. I know I've seen... Th- th- there's like a... You guys have like this dope yeah. little setup where yeah. you, you the have the newsstand. Yeah. The newsstand that you would just put the quarters in and that's where we just stash the film and people would come and pick up their film from that newsstand. But surprisingly nobody would pick up their films. Yeah, it's like the the last time I was we were at the shop, it was full. It was like hundred yeah. percent packed to the max. Yeah. I'm like I, I me, I, I went the next day, bro. Hell I'm yeah. like, I want to see it, bro. Like, I want to. For real. But for most of them, even today, like, uh, most people nowadays, they prefer having their films uh, just scanned and that's it. They don't think about, like, let's say they end up wanting to do more with it. Uh, they don't get that experience of basically, like, showing that you actually took the picture. That when you have your film, it's actually showing you proof that you actually took that picture and you have like if you want to print it or sell it or do whatever you want with it, yeah. you'll have it there available. Yeah, Nothing yeah. compared to like one simple scan. Yeah. Yeah, like I, I got my I dropped off like three films and mm-hmm. I just got it developed because I have a scanner. Yeah. And like 
that's one of the most dope parts of it like like you know yeah. scanning the negatives yeah i was like i can't wait to see like like did oh, I do that's a good just job? gonna come out yeah and then i'm still learning how to use my um well not use but like i'm yeah. still new to with yeah my, with the films uh, yeah Mm-hmm. So it's like I'm, I'm like fuck. I want to just gotta mess with it, gotta yeah. play with it. Once you start playing with it, that's when you start feeling the groove on it. Because yeah. mostly with these, these are like the best cameras to start shooting with with film, in my opinion. Because mm-hmm. I've shot with a couple other ones in Pasadena when I started doing the black and white. Mm-hmm. And in my opinion, so far with this one is like the more most user friendly for the age of it. Because it's a, it's a camera for my. Is it like the. The late 1970s, I believe. I don't know. You're yeah. you're from that area. You're that no, age. No, no, so. you know, yeah, it's. Uh, I think it came out in like 78. Yeah. Um, not 100 percent sure. Don't quote me on that. But we'll look it up later. <laughs> yeah. So I'm an 80s baby. I was born in 1986. So that camera, mm-hmm. the camera we're shooting with, and that's the Canon A1. Is yours a? Yeah, A1 Zen? program. Oh, you got the program. I just yeah. got the A1. Oh, the regular one. Yeah, I got that. I love that one. Yes. Just because it's fully analog compared to this one. This one, you need to do it more. uh, It has more electronical settings. Yeah. So to shoot the shutter, you need to actually have the battery. Compared to that E1. I don't don't need it. You don't need the battery. But the battery makes it easier. Yeah. Yeah. For basically the light meter. Yeah, Yeah. But so for that camera, shit, I love that camera. That's, in my opinion... It's better to start off with the A1 than to start with this one. Mm. This one, I with this setup, I like to do it just because I like to shoot on the go. The program basically helps it do all the settings ASAP yeah, with yeah, the shutter yeah. speeds automatically for me. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, fuck it. Yeah, because of that fucking auto-reloader. Because the auto-reloader does come in handy a lot to yeah. do continuous shots. Yeah, yeah. I'll just hold on it and it just reloads for me instantly. Yeah, like when you're not used to it, especially when yeah. you're not used to the whole like yeah. that happens to me because I'll shoot. What I do is like I have it in my bag, and like if I yeah. go to a meet, mm-hmm. I'll take it out and I'll take a few shots here, a few shots there. And you so just I'm be... not consistently. Mm-hmm. So sometimes I like I'll, I'll be like, ah, yeah. I forgot to crank it, bro. <laughs> yeah, so I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure the the auto comes in handy. Hell uh, yeah. For a sec, I was almost thinking about selling this one, but I was like, nah, it's such a good setup. Like, it's yeah. hard to even let go. Yeah, and it's nice and it's clean. Like, it look, like, and, like just by holding it, that battery, like the reloader, it does, like, you can feel it. It feels good to the grip. Like, compared yeah. to, like, without that grip part, like, you, like, without the reg- regular grips on even the di- um, digital versions, you could is- instantly feel the difference on it. Yeah, like, I don't know, in my opinion, yeah. Like these cameras, these like the, it's just a, it's like a beautiful camera, it bro. It's, it's it's just like really nicely made. It feels nice in your hand, mm-hmm. and it just it just like. For me, I feel like back in the day they used to do stuff like right, right. Like they used to be like, we're gonna make this shit right, and yeah. like now it's like let's do it quick. It's let's, so let's advanced just... about how they're doing it, but they're doing it so quick that technology is advancing like so fast that you're able to get like what uh the latest one there's one I've been keeping an eye on. The Sony A7 A7R4, I believe. 65 megapixels. Bro. <laughs> that's more than you would ever need. Yeah, like that's but... overkill. It's never too much. Really good, yeah. It's never too much. You can never have too much. Well, it depends who you ask, because there's photo- there's like the, those know. traditional photographers that still shoot this just way. film. Yeah. They're like, fuck that digital <laughs> shit, homie. Like, fuck that <laughs> shit. Like, bro, there's some photographers that they were so stubborn about it that they were yeah. like, I'm just gonna stop shooting instead of like adjusting to the digital. Like yeah. there, there was a there was a point, I don't know if it was like kind of like late maybe like late 90s mm-hmm. where like the film went digital and like the digital whole tradition the whole transition yeah. from switching to regular uh, slr film to digital uh digital film yeah because there's a two difference with the cameras because when you're shooting with those digital film cameras you get some crazy stuff just because of how that camera was built yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. and what i mean yeah it, it's just crazy how they built them over the years yeah it's it's two different things but um mm-hmm. they both have their place you know like yeah hey we're we're still out here shooting it you already the know? film yeah i don't know for, like for me yeah there's something about 
actually like shooting the film and developing mm -hmm. and then seeing the whole process yeah that makes it like you, mean when, more to when me. it comes out you're actually holding your picture on your hands you're actually feeling it. you're seeing how it came out yeah, yeah. and with digital all you're getting to see it is on the screen that's yeah, it it's, it's like uh not the same i mean it, it you could do the same thing with your phone nowadays well, well, that, that, <laughs> that was about that's what i was about to say like it's like we're so used to that like quick fast like limited it that, that with yep. the camera it's the same thing we're just like next picture go, 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 nah, go. yeah one of the good things that with, with the film cameras is like it slows you down it and does. it makes you actually compose a picture because you just have that one shot you have to honestly right. honestly in my point i'm still going hot last with this one but so far when i do shoot the difference with what is it with the digital and the film that's when i start uh like actually you have to know your limits when you're shooting the two because for me i was used to shooting slow with this one and shooting fast with the other ones the digital but ever since i got that auto reloader i got back into that whole ba 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 nah stop oh, so you are, you you'll do that sometimes i'm you'll still yeah i'm still doing consecutive just like if i was doing digital just because i want to get that like if i ever want to get that consecutive like i want to do a short film if i want to do a short film i'll have those three pictures to do it as a gift in that film okay so so you could show it so yeah show it. okay, okay. And usually when I shoot the consecutive, I'll do at least three. Three consecutive ones just so it could show the difference on each one of them. For sure. Yeah. Well, how fast does it, like... You want to give it a try? Do some portraits? I mean, I don't, I'll switch out the lenses. You'll hear that shit pop. And honestly, I ever since I got set it up like that, it's been... Cool. La mota! La mota. Ya se acabó la mota. Ya se acabó. Hey. What's up? I'm surprised. Ooh, time to hit that mota. <laughs> you read my mind. <laughs> Sacala, yeah. Sacala I, bolsita. <laughs> actually, uh, I went a little different this time. I I normally go indica. Yeah. This is a hybrid, but it's like a like 32% THC Dang. hybrid. So. Well, I got some wax if you want some. Pour some on top. Oh you, oh, you trying to get fucked up? Oh, you, oh, hey, you, you got you got it started with the micheladas, uh, bro. Where you're trying to take it back to my last episode because my last episode was all about drugs. Oh, it's back to episode. Wait, what episode are we on? This is officially episode number eight of the Paralyzed Number Podcast. eight. Gotta gotta wait for number ten. Number ten is gonna be lit. Yeah, actually, uh, when I get to number ten, I'm gonna start throwing them on like an audio platform. Oh, so that's when they'll they'll officially officially be like Got, a podcast. Gotta get it on the Apple, you know. Uh, yeah. So with Apple, one of the things is like uh, when you have your logo, it has mm -hmm. to be a certain size, uh, and the picture, the main picture that I'm using for my podcast right now, yeah, is like a small ass little Dang. file. So uh, one of the homies, Alan. Mm -hmm. Uh, he's gonna do my like shoe. I know Alan. Yeah, he's gonna do my like, uh, like a new shoe for mm -hmm. to have the main cover. So he's probably gonna be. He might actually be episode ten. Ooh, like, I'm, I'm, let's I'm go! Up. Shit! Yeah, like I, I got that fool on speed dial right now. <laughs> Alan gets down, man. Like you know how he gets down. Bro, I, I was telling him the other day that he's probably one of the most committed like photographers that shows up, bro. Because when he shows up to the meets. Like, he's there, like, chopping it up with us for a little bit. He'll yeah. say, what's up, blah, blah, But then he's on his game, oh, bro, yeah. shooting. <laughs> he'll, he'll, he'll take the full setup out and, like, do his thing, bro, and get some, like, dope ass Even shots with the lights, that. I was like, damn, fully yeah. equipped. Yeah, he gets down, bro. He, like, yeah, he gets down. I'm like, I, I, I need to be more like you, bro. Hell yeah, <laughs> shit. I, I got to catch up with that guy in a cool minute. Last time I saw him, he wasn't feeling so good, but now he's doing good. He's all on the belt. You don't, um, what's up? You don't throw the, your film, like the type of film you're you're using to remind Never. you. No? Yeah, I, like that's what I do with mine. Like I'll pull it out right now. I always yeah. remember, like as soon as I'm done shooting, I'll like put the next roll. I always try to keep consistent about what film I have in there. And usually it's the same, different roles, but I'm, I always say keep track. Yeah. Let me see this. Give it three shots. You'll instantly hear that shit. I'll, I'll try to, I'll try to um, 
get like a dope portrait of you in like the the whole in the podcast background. set. In the, podcast the whole setting. podcast setting. Hold on, hold on. Gotta adjust the mic, you know. There you go. Move it around. Move it around. Hey, but but the the camera angles are hell are yeah. Not moving so it'll it'll like what I, I hold it down and it'll hold shoot it down you. and it'll show you your light settings, so just your aperture, yeah. and then that's when you could press it all the way down and then lift it up and then all the way down and you could just keep doing keep it. Shooting it, yeah, or? or hold it down until you hear the three. Let me see. Got it. Go for it. I'll, Go for it. I try to get like a a clean portrait of you, <laughs> bro. Mm. <laughs> you know what would be dope to get with that one? The smoke. Ooh! So blowing the smoke out, you're gonna get those consecutive smoke blow like clouds. The blow. All mm-hmm. right. So let me adjust it to me, and then and then we'll fuck it. Load the, yeah. load the piece. <laughs> load the piece. All right. Set it down. Is it on? Uh, oh, yes, it is. Let's uh, um, take a little... Uh, smoking set. Smoke smoking break. break. Never mind. It doesn't matter yet because since my, since I'm still... I'm still technically starting out, so my... Uh, I mean, I'm not monetized, so it doesn't Ooh! fucking matter. Hey, don't... I say don't keep it monetized because as... If you keep it real, enjoy the full parts, that's where you get to have the most with it. Well, I mean, I have to get like a thousand subscribers before I even check. <laughs> All right. A thousand follow, a thousand subscribers. Follow me, motherfucker. Gotta Hit that go. follow. Hit that follow. Shit. We need them follows. Them follows get us more weed. We need that weed. <laughs> we, we need that weed. And more meat cheese. We need uh, that meat cheese. I'll let you fucking. I, I'll let you fucking. Uh, oh, green. Get that greens, and I'll get the. Damn I'll shot. I'll get the shot. You really want to see how that shot, that how that reloader sounds, huh? That that shit is always sounds like a beauty. Did you see me right now when I like? I almost tried to fucking. Load it. <laughs> <laughs> you just feel like like ah oh, shit. <laughs> Like, it happens, shit. So it's because I feel it, and yeah, I, and then it's. I feel like it's my camera, so yeah. my, obviously my shit. Dude, I have to fucking like crack. a sombre shit. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that fucking just shooting nonstop, reload, reload. Uh uh-uh. uh. Them fucking habits. Hell yeah, shit. Fucking let me fucking get get comfortable, shit. Yeah, it's a cool shot. I'm just. And I'm ready for it, bro. All right, all right, all right. Oh, that's dope. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Just like that. <laughs> Yo, like mine. On mine, I literally have to, like, you have to stop. Yeah. And then crank the lever. And then the, get the shot. Yeah. And then crank the lever. But with this one, just like that. That's dope. I'm, I might have to uh, look into... Might have to hit up that eBay to find the fucking... The reloader. The auto reloader. <laughs> Hell yeah, shit. Yeah, I don't know. There's something cool about, you know, owning something that was made back in the day, you know, and still yeah. using it. It's literally older than we are, bro. It and really it's crazy because we're still out here in motherfucking... 2021 shooting with a fucking camera yeah older than we are getting it in hell yeah oh shit the my headphone wire is kind of like wrapped around my fucking oh the chair the tinny chair shit i didn't even notice fucking up let me fuck oh shit Damn. Tomorrow's gonna be my first day off in a cool minute. Shit. From working at the shop? Oh, well, working at the shop and also doing a bunch of other uh, projects that I've been working on. And finally just decided to take a day off and just relax. Just gotta sit back, enjoy, you know. Yeah, sometimes you need to just. Can't. You want to take a take a day to yourself, bro. Hell yeah, shit. So what you gonna be up to for the next couple days? 
Um, gonna be working with. <laughs> That hit though. Ooh. <laughs> it's some good weed shit. Yeah, I, I I get my weed from the same from the same spot. It's called the Wonderland. 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 <laughs> Venice, Venice and like Broadway, Venice and Hill. Mm-hmm. Hold up, my my uh headphone wires are fucking tangled on my tear tire. The struggle. Nice, almost out. Wait, wait, we got it, we got it. Wait, ya made him. So, um, see, has fucking. You got it, shit. Let's get some music going. Da da bum bum. <laughs> shit. Damn, I'm gonna have to fucking. Take the headphones off. Shit, want me to unplug the mic? Nah, or the headphones? Nah, it's good. Just um, remind me not to fucking try to roll out before I'm <laughs> tangling that shit. Bro. Oh shit! Yeah, Hell no. Nah. <laughs> Anyways, well, salute to you. Know salute, I mean? yo. Yeah, shit. shit over. We fucking out here getting turned. Mm-hmm. Shit, you know how we do on a fucking Thursday. Going into fucking Friday, hauling ass, full blast, shit. In a few minutes. So, um, yeah, getting back to talking about the shop. So, yeah, people can just show up and yeah. drop off film. Um, yeah. We'll throw up, I'll throw up, uh, like, the, the info to the shop and everything, but it's called the one stop shop and it's let me see 341 south los angeles street yeah shoot through support if you guys yeah. are trying to get some film developed if you guys are trying to like get yeah, into film yeah. and pick up a camera yeah there's cameras available yeah, and if yeah. you just kind of like want to be around people that are in like the photography scene in no LA. no no yeah so far we're there at the shop we got a magazine issue going d streets magazine and it incorporates the basically um Every every uh, we feature photographers from every different city and incorporate their work like in the magazine, and it's pretty dope. Like I so far I I've always like ever since I started with them and seen their work how they started I've always enjoyed how they were and it's so far a great magazine the way how it's coming out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like all all the people are like really dope people they too. are like, all the people involved they in, are in and it's a lot of people that it just shows their work like it's it's really great it really shows like it really documents and shows how the people feel kind of talking about your photography like so what it what do you feel that is like your thing like what it My. what do you consider like like the the thing that you're into is like kind of like street photography no, my, with my thing i just try to shoot whatever catches my eye and i try to whenever i see like whenever like some things that are happening around the world like here in the city some protests or anything whatsoever that's when i try to document it it's uh when i see uh when i started with photography it was like a I would just shoot here and there, but nowadays, like, it's just incorporating everyday lifestyle that one would incorporate in L.A. Because L.A. has so different lifestyles that whenever you go, like, into a regular day basis, you get so many things, like, in just one day. And I, there is some work that I really been wanting to put out there, but some work I've just been putting on to the side because I've been trying to work on, on a book that would basically incorporate all the work that I've been trying to, you know, stack yeah. out, show. Because it's been a lot of years, ever since, you know, the meets, yeah. a lot of the protests, mm -hmm. and they dates back all the way since 2013. Mm -hmm. And mostly i just been stacking it up. Some people here and there would ask for some uh, some personal work, uh, some prints, and I would release them. But here and there, I would just do it because it's something that I enjoy. I don't see it as uh, a way to get money out of it. Right. But little by little, I've been getting into it and starting doing it on my own. So st stopped my 9 to 5 and went into doing it full time. 
So basically, what you're saying is you've been stashing all the good shit and holding it, and <laughs> yeah, it's so, all in the archives. Well, basically, in the hard drives right now. So you're planning on like putting it in a book? In is a it? book, just because in my experience, like yeah, I've seen. Don't get me wrong, magazines are great. I like how they are. I I've even done zines, but in my opinion, when you hold the book, like let's say when you went to like libraries. You go to a library and you go through the book section, mm-hmm. and if you see a book that has pictures from so many years, it just shows you how things changed just in that decade. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of shit going on like it right has. now. Like, it it really has. Yeah, that's a, that's a like we're living in. in we're living in an interesting time, so it's like yeah. you're gonna have a good. The record. whole transition from twenty. I haven't decided the years yet. I I'm just having like I'm sketching it out. I'm putting it together little by little. But so far, releasing wise, it's gonna take me at least like a good year or so. So it's gonna be in the works. Hey, as long as it happens, well, just you, like, you know, know sometimes she... like to get shit right, you know, it takes a little while. So it takes like... a while, but a poquito, poquito, you know. Yeah, yeah. for sure, for sure. Yeah. As long as it comes out and Hell we get to yeah. see the fucking yeah, yeah, the she... magic, bro. She is gonna be a slap to the face. <laughs> like, let me show you something real quick. So if like um. Like, if someone new coming into photography were to yeah. ask you, like, kind of some advice, like, what, what would be some, or what would be something that you would, um, like, you would have liked to learn early on in your photography game? Like, what's... Like, like once uh, starting out, out of the fresh? Yeah, like, what, or just, just some, like, advice you would give someone that's, like, new to the game, like... I'd say, take a picture, whatever catches your eye. Fuck with it as much as you can. If you enjoy it, cool. If not... You're still going to keep taking pictures no matter what. It's always going to be on your phone. <laughs> it's always going to be on your phone. That's how shit is now, man. It really is. Like, you And the quality from the phones, no matter if you're iPhone or Samsung, you're always going to have it on there. Yeah. So the quality is going to be up there. It's just a matter of the willing, of, yeah. of the will. Yeah, that's what, I t- like, that's what I try to tell people. Like, if I, if there's, like, any advice like that yeah. I could give, it's just, like, do it. Just get do out it. there and do it. Get bro. out like, there and just, do it. Shit, like the, don't be scared. There's a lot of shit that a lot of people are, like, there's a lot of shit going on right now. Yeah. And you just, like, when you put it all together, like, there's, it could be so much worse. It really could be so much worse. So, like, be happy where you're at and just keep doing the best you can. Do you just, like, approach people sometimes and ask them, yo, can, like, if you see yeah. somebody, something interesting in the street, you just, like. I Can just, I nah, so far, whenever I'm in the street, I just walk around, take some pictures, I'll listen to some music, or I'll even, like, smoke a blunt, walk around, and see whatever, like, goes around the city, because there's every, every day there's something new going on. Yeah, for sure. No matter what. Because, shit, I've been going to downtown, like, nonstop since, like, what? I, I can't even recall. Like, I'm, I'm always there in downtown, and... I have to go all the way from fucking Pomona to L.A. Yeah. Yeah, like that. That area that's is like, kind of wild. Yeah, like that. that's a cool drive right there. And, yeah. But it's always, it's it's always, I don't think about like how long the drive is just because I even enjoy driving. Yeah, same. Yeah, you're just chilling in the car, bumping some music, enjoying the jazz and going, you know, wherever you're going. Except when there's traffic, bro. Hell except, nah. Except when you get that LA traffic. Hell nah. You know how I'll be out here. Fuck that shit. Fuck that. And especially since I drive stick, shit, I'm almost fucking up my clutch. Already fucked up my third gear like that. Shit, fuck LA. <laughs> but uh, you also gotta love it, you know? Yeah. Gotta hate and love it. Hey, man, like, the, there's so many positives that there has to be some negative. Bro. There are some negatives, you know. but it's got it sours. Once you get around it, that that's where you, you know, you you live around it. And some people, they, ha- they work around it. They have to work with it. Yeah, you... Like, you know, those nine to fives. Nine to fives, fuck that shit. You have to adapt, bro. You have to you, adapt. You gotta adapt. You, you definitely gotta take that train... Or the bus, cause shit, I I was I was getting to LA a lot quicker 
on the train than to on the car. Yeah. But shit, once I got that fast track, that that was a whole different story. <laughs> yeah, that changes the game. Well, so you actually have the like yeah. the fast. But doesn't that work how it only works to on certain no, no, freeways? No, no. no? So you no, have to buy yeah, for certain specific freeway, freeways. Certain freeways you have to uh, you have an account with them. You uh, it's like an uh, you would deposit a certain amount and you would have a balance every time you go into those lanes. It deducts from that amount. Okay. If you have more than two people or three people, you would get into those lanes for free. And you would just okay. change it on the transponder. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've never, like, it's, I don't it's drive simple. enough to... Nah, it, it's plain and simple. All you do is you just change it, you put it up. I bought it at Costco. Oh, for real? Yup. It, it costs 40 bucks. And when you, uh, when you buy it... Uh, it's 40 bucks in credit and it, the transponder tree. So every time you get in there, it just deducts us 40 that you paid of, what, of it, basically. And then you can load it like online? Yeah, online, you connect, you know, you pay every time. I believe it's like 40 bucks. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of funny because uh, other people in like in other parts of the country, they're like, what the fuck are you talking yeah. about, bro? What the fuck is that? Yeah. Ain't no traffic here. No. <laughs> Yeah, it, shit, you know how I haven't been to New York, but I bet there the traffic out there. Fuck. Well, it's like small. Everything is so close it and so is. small. Yes. Yeah. Just like the taxis alone or whatever. I mean, I've never been, but yeah. like from what I've seen or whatever. Yeah. I mean, not. Hey, hey. Probably the only now, right? the only way we'll find out is if y'all yeah, support it. We buy our work and we get to New York. Let's go. <laughs> Everything's everything's available. Everything's, everything's available. available. Shit, we're stocked. Up. Come through. <laughs> Might get a homie discount and shit. Yo, right shit. Fucking, we just trying to get some shit pushing. Hell yeah, shit. Yeah, but hey, maybe you know I'm gonna you take know, him out to the artworks. It, it little by little, you know. Shit, it always starts somewhere. Nah, but I mean, like, yeah, like I was saying earlier, like. I, I'm lagging it because I should already like have stuff like on the website and yeah. like see and I haven't so honestly I have even tried like what running a website running a website and doing all that like yeah, honestly I don't even know where to start well I mean now with like Squarespace and all that shit it's a little yeah. bit easy but I'm still like damn like there's so many other shit like I'm trying to do this stuff with the paintings and I'm trying to like do the photography mm. thing and then edit and then do video stuff and then edit and then work on the podcast. Shit. Like, I'm still trying to learn how to do the whole video and the podcast shit. Here you are. Samples, bro. Samples. Ooh, bro. I know. <laughs> poquito, poquito. <laughs> it's just like the equipment and not even that, man. Not people just using their phones and recording off their no, phone. No, no, and yeah. shit. You know, you don't have to have like the best equipment, but you know. It makes it it makes yeah. it nice to have some, some yeah. official stuff, you know. It looks nice to have a little nice microphone or whatever. It's not even the official stuff. Huh. I'm gonna be going around downtown and I'm gonna be handing out flyers, so y'all might catch me out there, you know. Haul out your boy, come on, get a flyer, get a discount for your film. <laughs> hey, so go find the fucking uh. It's what, like you, fine Waldo. I'll wear I'll wear the whole Waldo suit. Just post it, bro. Post <laughs> yeah. it on your story. Post it up. I'm 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 gonna be on this street, fucking just chilling. Nah, not Should even we? chilling. I'm I like to walk around. Gotta explore. Yeah. There's always something going around downtown. So yeah, you yeah. know downtown's wild, man. Yeah, every, there's there, there's something going on in the, in every street. Every street. Yeah. Like no matter how how well you know those streets mm -hmm. during the day, there's so many shit going yeah. on. Yeah, especially during the now. day during that at night, bro. Yeah, shit. but for me, like I don't know, like for me, I, I always feel a little sketchy about like just fucking. Pop I'm taking a picture out of nowhere. Yeah, like popping my camera out on like random people and stuff yeah. like that. I'm always like, I I just Ugh. do it. Out. I do it like I was taking a picture out of nowhere. And my type of pictures, I always try to do it candid. Like you've seen my yeah. work. I don't try to go like up close onto their face. I always try to yeah. keep a oh. I try to get the whole um uh, the whole view. I'm all about showing the whole canvas, the whole area where you're at. Just because once you're showing like where you're at, it's for me, it's something that you sh you see every day, like in the city, but every day it changes. If you're going to do like street photography and like downtown stuff, like where, 
what better place in like down than downtown. LA, bro? LA, like, LA, LA, LA has like oh, everything. Shit, you got the beach like thirty minutes, and then you got the mountains thirty minutes. Where else can you expect? Yeah, and then you got the snow coming too. Shit, whenever it rains, cause you know how Big Bear it gets. Yeah, yeah, I've actually been skiing to Big Bear. Ooh. Like they they have like these like. Mm-hmm. Skis that you like sit on and you, yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy. Takes you all the way up there and you can yeah. just. Hit. It's a trip, right? It's like, it's kind of a trip, like. It really is. Yeah, like I one time I went and I we went down like the fucking steep ass hill, Damn. and I was just we were just smashing it, and the the guy that was like kind of like guiding me, he was yeah. like, look back, and that like it, the hill looked like it was like fucking like like this, bro, like Ooh. steep as fuck. <laughs> like, I'm like, God damn. Yeah, that seat pass. Like y'all, y'all shit. got a Mexican out here doing wow <laughs> shit. Guys. In the middle of fucking night, shit. In, in, in the fucking, in the motherfucking forest and fucking. Oh yeah, in the shit. in the middle of the mountains in California, shit. Where else can you find good weather out out of like all out of like the U.S. Well, what um, do you think? Yeah. Um. Like L.A., California, like specifically Southern California, mm-hmm. has some has weather called Mediterranean weather, yeah. and there's only like between five or seven places in the world yeah. where it's like just there's the Mediterranean same. weather, yeah. like the Mediterranean. Like the other, I think the only other place would be Italy. Well, yeah, um, yeah, like I don't remember what what the places are, but there's a few. There's, yeah, a, there's few. a few spots where it's there's like, a few that actually yeah. pop out that have the same type of weather. Yeah, and, and that's what it's, it's it's called Mediterranean weather. You also like uh, have gotten into doing some like stuff with drums, no? Oh, oh shit, you... that's a whole different level, mijo. You don't even want to know. <laughs> uh, excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> shit, once I got the drone, like recently after like the whole COVID situation, I decided like to go into the whole film because that's where it is. Nowadays, it's just going to the whole film game. First, I was going to the whole photo, but now nah, you got to go into everything. Once yeah. you go into the film, you go into the audio and you go into the whole music too and it's into everything but so far with the drone i was i recently picked up the fpv with the headset so every time that you fly it you're controlling you're seeing what you're uh, flying your drone so vr and everything i hear fucking getting that expensive shit yo shit i put that shit on credit so shit book me up whenever you want Huh. videos on deck <laughs> yeah i mean as you guys have seen already i'm going to be showing like you know some of your work some of your pictures yeah. some of the videos you could throw that shit up and uh i'll show you sh- show show shit. show them what you're fucking working with or whatever but poquito poquito i don't want to get them too excited <laughs> yeah actually um i mean i i want to get a drone i'm gonna go basic so i'll probably end up getting get, like the, get the that, mavic mini 2. the mini 2 that one's pretty dope just because they uh, if you do the fly more combo mm-hmm. it gives you three batteries and like the extra propellers and everything yeah. and those three batteries really do really do come in clutch yeah. just because you have them loaded when the drone dies uh you have another one ready right there yeah and the hub that it comes in you put you plug it in the wall and that's it easy and simple yeah yeah Yeah, i'm just waiting i need to upgrade my laptop so i'm just waiting for the new 14 inch macbook pros to come out because i wouldn't be with this laptop i wouldn't be able to edit the footage from from the drones yeah yeah it it just so i'm as soon as i get my laptop i'm Mm -hmm. gonna i'm gonna upgrade to a drone because i a grown. <laughs> yeah. Ya <está> pedo, compa. <laughs> ya está pedo, ya la michelada. La, ya la esto. Mota, For real. A ver, ¿quieres más? Uh, you know, no ¿quieres más? <laughs> hey, I'm kind of stuck, bro, because this fucking... Hold up. I, I might have to unplug this mic. I mean, the... What? Oh. The, oh, shit. You been going back and forth again? Not again. I'm stuck, bro. <laughs> I'm out here stuck in this motherfucker. Not again. Uh, you want to pack the balls right there? Shit, I'm going to get the wax right now. Oh, hand. Ooh. So far, that wax, shout out to Bobby. He fuck, He hooked it up with that wax. That shit's fire. Uh, shit, what day is it today? Today's Friday. 
Friday. Let's go. Hitting the weekend hard, you know? It's gonna, it's gonna be a lit ass weekend, especially with what Memorial Day happening too. Yeah. Shit, that's just gonna be lit. You got plans? Shit, honestly, I'm just going with the flow. I know I do. I I do got a lot of plans with Miss uh, Little Tara. Orale. Mhm. Mm Fuck, I might have to take her. Yeah. Uh... Oh, by the way, she's a new novia. Yeah. I know. I seen the other day, bro. Yeah, 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 I was like, no. I was like, damn, they they a little cozy right now. Like, is is that a is that a new relationship? Uh, it, so far, right now, now it's official. Oh. Now, now, so y'all know, just so y'all. Know. All right, we we're gonna have to take a little intermission because I need to take a pee pee. Oh. We'll be right back. Sorry. So, um, yeah, like for me, like I can I can kind of feel when I need to pee, but I only have a certain amount of time before that shit starts coming out. Mm -hmm. So, like, I can feel it, but I have to go take yeah. a picture real quick. So, we back in this bitch. We're back at it again. What's up? Back <laughs> at it again. Time to time to get that bowl started. You already know. Get it. Ooh. Well, I get you. I'll let you get greens this time. Oh, for sure. With that so, waxies. Um, Orale. Yeah. Let me pour this. Let me pour half of this beer really quick. We got last last beer. We're gonna go halfers on it. Um, oh God! I was gonna ask. Uh, so you were born and raised here, or you're like born in LA, raised in Azusa, and then moved to LA to move to Pomona. Yeah, uh -huh. I was in Azusa for a cool minute. Uh, probably since my childhood, I was in Azusa. And then from Azusa, I moved to Pomona, and after that, I just been going back and forth to LA and nonstop. Ever since, let me see, which one was it? The first meet that I went to. Ever since that, I never stopped going. I've ever, I stopped. I've kept going nonstop. Do you meet someone like the dopest people? You really some like do. the most creative people. You really like the, do. the people that come out to the meet and stuff. It's mm -hmm. just like. I always, like, that's one of the things I always say, like, one of the things that I always tell people is, like, if you haven't been out to, like, a photography meetup or, like, the the mm -hmm. scene in L.A., check that shit out. Even check if you're not into out. it, just come just out, have a good time, it. vibe with the people, you know, just, like, enjoy the festivities. God. Enjoy the fi <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wee. Te voy a poner a dormir, mijo. Hey, ahí está mi cama. I'm, 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 hey, I'm go. home. I can get lit. <laughs> shit. You yeah, have to fucking chill and shit. That's it. Let go. A la cabeza. A la cabeza. I'm a scared. <laughs> <laughs> cheers. <laughs> Let go. I'll, I'll fucking cheers. Let me fucking. Ay, ay, ay. You don't even know, mijo. There's going to be an event tomorrow and then a party on the weekend. Shit. It's going to be a lit fucking weekend. I don't even know what I'm going to be doing Monday. Monday is Labor Day. Though. I know. But shit. So far, whenever, like, things like, like, to be honest, I don't even plan my weeks. I stop planning my weeks just because every day I, it just comes up out of nowhere. <laughs> out of nowhere and i just to be honest i just try to go like to the shop and basically there's a lot of shit that i'm trying to go through there so i've been working with it and helping out as much as possible and once i'm there try to work on my own shit and then little by little put it out there and see how it goes because yep. usually That's it's it. It's an it's a great space right there. They're at the shop. Where can people find some of your work? Some like the stuff that you oh, do. Mostly. Hit the plugs. Hit the motherfucking plugs. So far, I just been keeping it on the IG. The I've IG. been yep. I haven't really been putting it out there just because I've been trying to you know keep it on the low. But if anybody wants to do any work, how at your boy. What's the IG? Hit him with the IG. R -A. I'll put it up to him on the screen. Oh, we'll do it on the screen. We'll give you the pop up. But if you want it on the mic, it's ravp dot underscore. That's it. But go motherfucking follow.
Hell yeah, hit that follow. Hit that follow. Follow, Shit. go fucking um, check out the work. Check out the yeah. Work. Check out the artwork. If you like something, I might do something custom. Any custom prints, you know? Okay. It's 2020. We we gotta get that money. You feel me? Uh, gotta survive, wait, man. Is it's it 2020? Nah, it's already 2021. Shit. You, I'm still yeah. stuck on that 2020 shit. I'm already a year behind. We passed that, bro. I we passed know. that shit. We, shit. we fucking... We, we gotta move on from that shit, bro. For real. That yeah, it kind of like... It's it almost like... Different. Shit like stopped for a little bit. Into 2020, it was like a little like, what the fuck is yeah. that? Like, I remember at first, it was almost like a movie. Bro. No, no. At first, I was enjoying it, to be honest. Because before all of that, I was doing, uh, what is it? It was... The... They're going to come after you, bro. No, no, no. It was the human, the human, human resources. So basically, family resources. There you go. Family, uh, yeah, family services. So I was doing family services, and then I was helping out with, basically taking care of a kid when, like, when I was, it was like what twenty, yeah, twenty nineteen. For a whole year, I was uh helping raise, and teach a young, young special ed kid that I would take around the L A community, and they were just walking and busing it, and every day it was just um showing him how to do simple things just because he had autism so the program basically had me show him around the community Mm -hmm. and show him how to do simple things like how to take the bus how to go like to the store manage money here and this like be able to for uh, be able to have him manage doing things on his own it was like a mentorship program. yeah it was it was yeah it was uh it was like a one-on-one um what was it? I forgot the term of it. Caregiving. So I was caregiving uh, this young eighteen year old that mm-hmm. it was. I started like eight in twenty nineteen, early twenty nineteen, and then I ended up stopping from the whole COVID situation, just oh, because really? I couldn't take him in the whole community anymore. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And like we everything were. Everything just died out. Yeah, just... everything just died out because we would take the bus, we would take the train, and you know how the public and everything and the germs and yeah. so. We had to stop all of that, and I was really enjoying it. Just because I was getting in, like, we would go to the beach, and we would go to Long Beach, and all these places, and it would just be by the bus. Yeah. And after all of that, I did even, I would get reimbursed by the company for all that bus, and oh, it was sure. all handled, so mm-hmm. I will, like, it was great with the kid, but that COVID situation really, like, ruined it for all these programs it's it's crazy yeah that you bring that up because um like i i when when covid started or whatever like i remember having conversations with my dad about um stuff like that where uh people dealing with like uh like autism or other mental disorder is like yeah how do you explain to someone that might not understand directly what was happening with covid and like mm-hmm. why we can't go outside you know mm-hmm. why you have you have to stop seeing him, you mm-hmm. know like that's something that people would never they talk never, about. No, bro. That's why they never understood it. Like it just stopped and that's it. And after uh, the whole like the whole COVID situation started, school stopped, uh, people stopped working, and there was nobody on the street not even not even buses nothing and it happened all around the world and when that happened that's like that's when a lot of things changed not just economically like yeah the economy went down no matter what it went down but the whole ecosystem with, with like the whole like you I saw a bunch of countries that uh, had like a bunch of smog and their pollution was bad and the whole like how they managed it and once the, there was no cars no activity at all around the world that's when it got a lot better like it started getting like more rain was happening and you know how it was during the lockdowns at first yeah yeah 
and it was fucking hailing. That shit was a bitch. But after a while, you just got used to it. Everybody struggled at first, but you were everybody. Every, some people were able to manage. Some people weren't. Unfortunately, no. unfortunately, and so, uh, thou, like thousands and thousands of people did ended up passing away. That's like when you go into the numbers of how many people you ended up passing away because of COVID. Like even close ones and friends and all that, like it makes you like really think. No, for sure. Like I mean, a lot of people died, but it could have been a lot a worse. A lot like, worse. You know? It really could have. That it really makes you think, but yeah. um, yeah. Going back to that, it's like, did you keep in contact with that with that guy at all? Like with with the kid, with the kid, you were yeah. Uh, so far he he was uh, I haven't kept up contact with him just because I'm doing my own thing and I try to keep it more work related. He tried to uh follow like one when I try to do work related stuff like yeah. Once I take work-related stuff, like, at that situation, I didn't want to put it on social media or anything publicly just because oh, it yeah. was, you know. Yeah. You, yeah. you have to I, keep that private. Yeah. yeah. Confidential, you know, yeah, sure. and with the family. And I try to be as professional about it with him. Yeah. So I told him straight up, I can't have you like this. It Later on, if I catch him on the street or in downtown, you know, I'll catch all you, but, you know. But so far, the way that how I was showing him around LA and around the city and around the whole, the whole Southern California, yeah. he, me and him really got around and did something that really worked with us, yeah. with one another. And the whole COVID situation really did hit us. And at that point, um, he did have to stop seeing me for a couple weeks mm -hmm. because his mom ended up getting sick. A couple people did end up getting sick on yeah. like what, February, February of 2020, and then uh, March uh, 2020. That's when ended up the lockdowns. Yeah, mm -hmm. but that's crazy because from from his perspective, it's like yeah, like the, I mean, did people explain to him like you? All no, he had to deal with it on his own because he had that's to take care of his mom. His mom got really sick, and it was a bad situation. And after that, I didn't work with him that week. And he thought that I may, uh, that I cared about it as much, but I was like, no, I understand. Like, he was really worried about it, that I was going to make it a big deal, that, oh, he was in trouble. No, just because he had to take care of the family, and it's understandable. He, in his instincts, he knew what he had to do with the family just because uh, there was so much, so many things going on in his life, and yeah. little by little, like he was able to manage and cope with it. That's what, I, that's what uh, over time, like when I was getting to know him in that year, he was progressing a lot. Yeah. He he would always ask me like, oh, am I doing better this and that? I'm like, don't think about like what where you're going. Think about how you're doing now and how you could do better. Yeah, for sure. That sucks that like, you know, Kobe kind of just like. It stopped, Stop and shit, cause like, it's something that it really, like, we enjoyed, but at some point, like, that put a hole, and it really changed the perspective of how we lived, not just in my life, and everybody's life, like, there was a lot of shit that happened. And you need, like, you, like, one of the things for me, like, I had a crazy childhood, man, like, mm -hmm. I... I, like, lived all over the place, moved around, did, like, yeah. Um, one of the things that I've come to understand now as a grown-up, because, like, I, I, I do a lot of, like, reading just to be a better person and understand, yeah. like, human psychology and how our brain works and everything. Yeah. And one of the things that I, I've, like, come to learn is, like, um, <clears throat> my fucking, my, <laughs> my train of thought is going, <laughs> 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 No worries, I'm used to it. No, it was like, bro, I had I had such a good point. Yo, we been smoking, motherfucker. Hell yeah, shit. That motherfucking shit. wax got and a motherfucker twisted. No, nah, I was going to say, no, I had a... <clears throat> shit. I was in a... I had a really good... Uh, 
The thoughts it, come it, and go. It'll, it'll come back right now. <laughs> it'll come back right now. Give us a sec. Your, your boy is lit. Motherfuck. Yo. <laughs> that wax was lit. Um, No, but yeah, any, uh, like it, it sucks that um, them they had to stop, especially for him on his yeah. side. It's like, damn, like we were, I was learning so much from this guy and now I can't. No, there, in my perspective, I saw it as a good way. Just because at some point I had to stop working with him and I didn't want to make it fucked up for him because uh, he was so attached working with me and I was, right. you know, I was helping him little by little and showing him how L.A. was and yeah. how it really is because I told him straight up, I, I didn't sugarcoat it at all for him. I told him, this is what happens. This is how we do it. Everybody's got to make a living somehow. Mm-hmm. Some at some point you're gonna have to do something that you're gonna be completely, some completely uncomfortable of doing, and that's where you're just gonna be fuck it. You end up doing it, and you end up enjoying. It. Like it's just giving it a try, giving it a chance of seeing if you like it or not. Yeah, but just gotta fucking, you know, try just. Yeah. Sometimes you just gotta take it one day at a time. One day at a time. That's all you gotta do. It one day at a time. Don't gotta rush it. I hear you motherfucking lit. Shit, compared now, uh, twenty twenty one. Now that everything's opening up back up, you know that's just gonna be even more lit now. Especially shooting pi- shooting more pictures. You think people are just going to start, like, coming out and just going back to normal right away? Uh, I don't know. Because, I mean, right. everything's opening up June 15th, right? Supposedly. You think but that? let's see how that goes with that. So right now, what the whole, what is it, uh, vaccine situation with... That they said that you'll get like a fifty dollar gift card if you get a vaccine. Yeah, they said that shit on live TV. I was like, "Are you fucking serious? You get a fifty dollar gift card? You're promoting people to get vaccinated?" Well, did you hear about the? Uh, there's like another state where one of the guys they're doing like a lottery where if you get vaccinated, you're put in a lottery to win a million dollars. Do you hear about that one? <laughs> Damn. I think like yeah, some somewhere, like in the East Coast. Yeah, yeah, they're doing that. So like, it's but, happening but, all around the world. But, <laughs> the, but but wait a minute, doesn't that make you like? Doesn't that isn't that a little suspicious to you? Like why? Like, it makes you wonder why they put in money for it. Like why? Yeah, like the commit. Everybody in the world should be like. Every person should be making their own decision if they want to take the vaccine or not. Sure. And in my opinion, I see it like a regular flu shot. You you get a small dose in the body. And once you get a small dose and it goes uh, like, yeah, you get sick a little. But then that's when the process, like you get a small dose and your body gets used to it. Yeah. That's how it would be with the flu shots when you'd be like in kindergarten or even a, ki- a kid. Like, everybody got them shoot flu shots. Like, all of a sudden, you're getting scared about a single shot? Like, damn, mijo. Not me, bro. <laughs> I, I've never I've never gotten a flu shot. Really? Ever. Damn, really? Ever in my life. I've have, never, you ever, have you gotten sick? I haven't been sick in, like, two years. <laughs> Did you ever get, uh, like, the whole COVID or no? Mm-mm. No? Not, damn. not that I... But but I stayed at home. Yeah, I, like I was literally like home, home. Damn. I didn't go out for shit, bro. Like mm-hmm. sometime earlier this year, I I was like, fuck it, I need to start doing shit again. I can't just be home all day. Yeah, because I was literally just fucking here, bro. Like just pop, pop. shit. I was like I was saying, I was paranoid about mm-hmm. that shit. I was like, I mean, I'm missing half a lung. I can't yeah. really cough right. I can't use the the muscles on my stomach, so I yeah. can't really like give like a good strong cough yeah so i was like in my thinking i was like if i were to get it i'm basically fucked because you know so i was hiding bro i was and you straight went into hiding i was in hide mode i was like 
Fuck y'all. I'm out. Oh, Lock yeah, them bro. doors. Like, I bet you were stacked up on Michi's, huh? Michela. Yeah. Shit. I had, like, I had like fireball on deck, bro. <laughs> but, that, but then we had to stop drinking that shit. Uh, Did a motherfucking dirt. Yeah, to kind of like uh, close it up. Because we've yeah. been chilling fucking for a cool <laughs> minute. For um, real. We're going to be going already into 1 a.m. Yeah. Any last words? Any last? I don't really know. That wax hit, is hitting the no. spot right now. No, it always hits the spot, but shit. Hope you have a good ass weekend. A faux show. Hey, yeah, yo, yeah. yo, that that fucking wax made me forget what the fuck I was talking about, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I have this, gr- I have this great ass point, and then, <laughs> yeah, that shit was gone, bro. Yeah, like, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that yeah. shit was crazy. All you have to do is just put a little bit of weed on top and stash it with some wax, and that's it. You get a cool little burn. A cool little burn. Mm-hmm. And then you just park it up and that's it. And let's go to let's the motherfucking go. moon. You already know. Shit, we got Elon Musk going to the moon. Shit. No, that motherfucker's <laughs> going to Mars, bro. Ah, shit, he, he's past the moon already. That motherfucker said, fuck the moon. Let's go to Mars, homie. A la verga. Shit, what the fuck is that Mars? <laughs> rich, rich motherfucker shit. <laughs> Shit, I bet there's gold out there, and they don't want to admit shit, look. They ain't shit out there, they, bro. Shit, out of that shit. Yeah. I mean, hey, I, like, if we exist, something else has to exist for sure, bro. But, yeah, yeah they're, uh, like, probably in another galaxy or something, but, yeah, they're about there's, there's thousands and thousands and millions and billions of galaxies. You, it's I, so much, like, it's to imagine like and we're small compared to all of them and there's i'm pretty sure there's thousands of people out there there has to be there right? has to be it, have you ever seen those projections where it kind of like zooms out and it keeps zooming uh-huh. out like earth and then the moon and yeah. then like the first like mars that and satellite is how in the motherfucker right now shit <laughs> Shit, no, hey, post pull, pull some pictures post that link and there shit <laughs> a what a fucking the fucking the whole fucking guy i don't know or like that like I mean, to was... this day like that's happening right now in millions and millions of galaxies and we don't even know like there they could even be a black hole and close by and we don't even know i mean there is black holes i, I don't know if there's any close by but Pero, shit fuck that yeah, Pero, trip, there's there's thousands of thousands of galaxies out there and it makes you think like we're the only ones, hell no. Nah. We're not the only beaners out here, bro. Hell no. Nah. We're different colors, different species. We'll never know. One day we'll find out. We'll we'll go to however however long we live. Cause I don't know, it's it goes nonstop. Ooh. What you think? There's shit after the. After you're gone, there's some no. shit afterward. Or what? So far, I don't even think about it as most like, like that, like that. You you never thought about it. Like nah. That. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's a trip thinking about that shit. Like, like after you're gone, is that it? Nah, you I'm, start I'm like, over? I, I'm like shit. Whatever happened, happens. Yeah. Let it roll. Yeah, that's how I kind of live my life. Like, Let it roll, cause shit happens and you could have died in your sleep. You'll never know. Every day could be your last day. Yeah. Any day could be your last day. Literally. I mean, you could literally just be, you know, driving to the store to pick up some motherfucking milk and somebody else, me <laughs> crashes into your ass and that's no, it, but, bro. But, no, but that's literally, like, that's it. Yeah, like, yeah, the, you don't know. It yeah. It just happens like that. I don't know. Yeah, or sadly, but that's just how the world is. Yeah. You just got to, you know, live the most. You got to live the most out of it. It's crazy because, like, when I got shot, like, I almost died. I was close to dying. Yeah. And so, so like, so for me, like, I I know that lesson, you know. I know the lesson of, like, you know, enjoy life because you mm-hmm. never know. But even me, I forget, bro. Sometimes I take it for granted, too. I'm like, yeah. 
you know, like I like I'll I'll take a whole lot of days off when I should be like doing shit, you know, because you do you you know I could be gone tomorrow, you yeah. know. So even people that have experienced close to death experiences, you forget, bro. Like you start, uh, you yeah. always start taking shit for granted, bro. After a little while, yeah, you forget, and then like nah, but yeah, nah, yeah, you gotta do everything you can, like while you can, cause you never gotta know. Make, you'll never know. That's the thing. You yeah, never there, there's know. like people that just went. I'm gonna go to the gas station real quick. And mm-hmm. Some shit happened and they they didn't yeah. make it. They, Gish, got, they got shot up. They got shot up. That's and... what's crazy, bro. Like I I like mm-hmm. I've seen so many like serial killer shows and murder case yeah. shows and all this. Like yeah. literally, bro, you could literally be going yeah. about your day randomly. And yep. come across some crazy motherfucker. And yep. that's it, bro. Game out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Like, most recently what I heard was, what is it? On the 91. On the 91 freeway. Oh, the, the kid. The little kid. The yeah. kid. Yeah. On the freeway. And she was just driving. I She was just doing her thing on the freeway. It could have been anyone. Yeah. And she, her kid ended up getting shot. Yeah. Like, Damn. Yeah, it's crazy, man. It's like, crazy. Like I always tell people, like I don't, I don't get mad driving because yeah. um, everybody makes mistakes. Like I know everybody I, like, makes mistakes. I consider myself a pretty good driver, but yeah. I know I've cut people off. I yeah. almost no. accidentally hit people. So yeah, 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 like yeah. when someone cuts me off, I'm just like, bro, shit. Oh, no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, and honestly, I would go like. Calling gas like ninety two hundred, like calling out like, yeah. but I would just be cruising. I wouldn't be. I would be going along with the traffic yeah. because I would be taking the fast track and people would be going at those same speeds. Yeah, yeah. Like because you have that fast track and people, you see all that fat, all that traffic, but you're just you're cruising just... it. Yep. Nah, but <laughs> that's everybody. But like, that's you, everybody. You, you slow down as you get older. Yeah, you get you, you, you slow you, you down. Out and you're like, all right. Yeah. Let me not fuck up my car real quick and yeah. relax a little No, bit. but after a while, like, I've when I was driving, like, before I quit my job at the dealership, I was driving a good amount of cars from Mercedes, Bentleys, Nissans, you name it, I've driven it. And I would just take it around the church, take pictures of it inside, interiors and exteriors, like, from the outside and inside. And edit the pictures, and then I would just upload, and and then the cars would just get sold, and it would be just for the dealership. That's kind of a cool job. <laughs> it it was a cool little job, but shit, they didn't pay well. That's the thing, you know. Got it. I had to switch it out, you know. Mm-hmm. I gave them a number. They didn't like it, and did my own thing. Let me go get this number somewhere else then. Exactly. I was I, I was like, fuck it. I'll rather take a long shot and do it my own way. Yeah, yeah it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be like rock bottom. Because yeah, it was good in at least it was somewhat of a good income during the whole COVID situation Yeah. compared to everybody else. But I was like, it's better than how it was right there because it really wasn't r- worth my payment worth the pay in my opinion that's life bro sometimes that's you life. have to make those decisions you gotta make you know? those moves little by little you just gotta work around it gotta make the most of it gotta make those steps that are really gonna change poquito poquito you know a little at a motherfucking time yeah it was fucking uh dope having a conversation with hell you. yeah we out here fucking uh throughout the page i will have been showing your work and shit so again Go follow, check out the page, and um, oh yeah, one of one of these days I'll probably just go on a posting right on there, just post a bunch of good work on there. I just been stashing it away, cause I was just like, nah, so far it's like I, right, but I put it to the side, I archive it, and I just let it sit there, and little by little I put it out there, whichever st- starts catching my eye, and so far how. Uh, 2021's going I think it's better to you know let it show how how everything was going cause it really shows how the people really express themselves yeah. during the whole um, Black Lives Matter and the whole um, the protesters again the whole community against the police brutality oh you have a, like a lot of 
like images of yeah a bunch of that so i'm gonna be putting a bunch of that a bunch of that out there soon so wait till you know i drop them them files them pictures you know for who show mm-hmm what oh by the way Wait for issue number six of D Streets magazine. Ooh. Um, oh yeah, it's on uh it's on pre order right on now. On pre order, right? yeah. It's gonna be coming out, let me see, on I believe January sixth. I I'm not sure. January? I don't remember. No. I, no, that, 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 no. What month are we on? No, right. I'm bad June. with my month. June. 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 So June sixth, yes. Yeah. June sixth. So that's when it's gonna come out. That that meet you love that. I know for real. That got me all fucked up. <laughs> it's not even a Michelada, bro. It was like, uh, this was like, uh, it was like the, these cubs. Yeah. And it was uh, the mango carts. Yeah. So it was just like golden rolled mango carts. If, if you guys want to try out the shit that we were drinking, that shit was bomb. Not mango sponsored. Life. Golden no, rolled. Sp- sponsor me, though. Yeah. Sponsor my. Oh, yeah. Sponsor. <laughs> Spot some our way. Shit, we'll give you more episodes. <laughs> we'll have more people out here. Shit, yeah, sure, yeah. an episode a week. <laughs> yeah, um, we're getting there, bro. Yeah, e- episode every Friday. Yeah. Uh, all the all the homies and shit, all the people that I've hit up yeah. to be on the show. Let's get this shit going. We gotta get it going, you know. Gotta, we gotta make a living, you know. Shit, sure. gotta say, uh, thank you for coming through, and you know. Dropping by and fucking having yeah. a comfort, uh, a comfort. <laughs> La michelada, mijo. Shit. Edit that shit out, homie. Edit that shit out. Thanks for coming through and fucking dropping by and fucking, you know, chilling. And dropping yeah. the line and shit. It was yeah, dope. Yeah. You already know. It's always, always a good time catching up, you know. Shit. There's still a lot of people I gotta catch up to. There's, well, you know. Gotta gotcha. make them episodes. <laughs> Alright, well, we motherfucking out. Later. Catch you on the next one. For sure. Ooh. Hey, watch that shit not be recording or some shit. <laughs> I don't, this, this is my longest official episode. Pacing in my studio, just coming up with dapper bars to spit in crucial situations when I play the rapper's part. Heard I got a denim heart and lyricism in my jeans. Cut a track down, leave it bald head like Mr. Clean. Spit it mean, a record fiend. I school you niggas, call me Dean. I'm always beast, just never seen. Stay on the chase for minty green. It's local hotties, niggas say they ballin', but they broke though.